What's up, Facebook? What's up, Instagram? On Instagram, I have makeup on. On Facebook, I don't. It's pretty funny. It's, it's so much easier than putting makeup on just to have the computer do it. And I don't want to be, you know, hiding behind a filter. So if you want to watch me without makeup on, you can watch me on Facebook. If you want to watch me with makeup on, you can watch me on Instagram. Now, it may not be my preferred makeup. The eyeshadow is a little sparkly over on Instagram, but you'll survive. I have a quick message for you tonight because it's time for bed. It's so beyond time for bed. And I wanted to tell you that you're if your life isn't going exactly the way that you desire for it to go, if it is not just like, if you're just not, you know, if you're not firing on all cylinders and just feeling like you're kicking ass, then one thing that you should look into or you could look into is what are you giving credence to? Because what I feel like is a lot of you are giving credence to the thoughts that go through your head. Not even like necessarily that you believe that they're true, but like that you believe that they mean something. That you believe that, for instance, like I posted earlier about exercise, because exercise is such an easy example. Exercise is just always like the go-to example for everything, because literally when you learn how to exercise daily, you learn how to do life and then you can just apply the lesson all across the board and you have more energy and you feel better and so why wouldn't you? So exercise isn't the end lesson. Exercise is the first lesson. Exercise is where you can begin to transform your life. So the post that I wrote earlier was about how I have thoughts every fucking day about how exercise is a time suck, how I don't have time for it, how I, w I should, if I'm in the middle of doing some work, I'm like, I should just keep working. I should just push through. I shouldn't disrupt this work with some exercise and then get all off track because I worked out because it's never, doesn't ever feel like so convenient for me to exercise. Maybe once in a million years, <laughs> maybe like on vacation, when you just are like, oh, I'm gonna go check out the new hotel gym or something absurd. But on the regular, just on the day-to-day -day living business, it doesn't ever feel like, yeah, perfect. I have nothing else I wanna do. I'm so excited to exercise. My body is just like raring to go. No, it's never like that at all. But the thing is, I have these thoughts and then I just simply don't care that I have the thoughts. First of all, I certainly don't fall into the, 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 the kindergarten trap of believing that what my thoughts say is the truth or that it's reality or that it has like that as though the fear mind has more access to truth than I do. <sighs> like quite the opposite. The fear mind has zero access to the truth, which is why it's the fear mind. I mean, if it had access to the truth, it couldn't be the fear mind because Fear only exists where truth and reality are not. Fear is all about what's unreal, what's hypothetical, what's not love, what is the opposite of aliveness is fear. Fear is contractive, not expansive. And so, but uh, the fear mind knows that you're also smart. It's smart, you're smart, we're all smart. And it knows that if, it, if you get onto its game, you will escape its grip. And then you'll be off doing creative shit and things that scare the fuck out of the creative mind. I mean, out of the fear mind because creativity is the most terrifying thing in the world for the fear mind. I mean, you've now you've gone even beyond the, the, the lion on the savannah eating you. You have gone on to like the absolute uh, scariest possible thing, like putting yourself into a creative work and then allowing it to be judged by the universe, by all the people, all the judgmental fear minds out there. The fear mind knows what the fear mind is like. And it's like, you got seven and a half billion of those out here and you're going to go and put yourself out there. You're going to go and put your art out there. You're going to go and put your creation out there. Are you out of your blessed mind? Well, yeah, I'll be out of that fear mind for the rest of my life because it doesn't bring me joy. It doesn't spark joy. I can Marie Kondo that shit right out of my life because it is not the thing that ever makes me feel anything that's positive.
even the safety that it provides is so, uh, it's so low level, it's so low vibe, it's got such a low vibe. And it's a survival kind of safety. It's not like a, oh, safe, coddled, and warm, like a, like a created kind of love and expansion kind of safety. No, it's like a, I barely survived, but you'd better stay terrified or else you're not gonna again kind of safety, which is no kind of safety at all. So the point is that I don't make the mistake, the kindergarten mistake of believing that what my fear mind says is actually real. Like that exercise is, that I don't want to exercise, that I don't have time to exercise. Come on. You have time for anything that you choose to have time for. You do not, you do not not have time. You have, you make different choices. I mean, I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have time. And it's a big fucking lie. So I know that's not true, but then I think the place where some people get 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 hung up and I probably got hung up like in 2014 when I was kind of we were like kind of getting the habit of exercising on but like also not I think I probably uh fell into the second trap the second trap trap door number two uh which was that I have the thought like I don't have time for this blah 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 and then it wasn't that I believed that trap door number one I, I survived that stage of the game, but that I thought then that, well, Lauren, just look, these thoughts are proof that you're not just the kind of person who exercises. You're just not the kind of person who wakes up in the morning and it's like, oh, I hear the birds chirping. I'm going to throw off the covers and I'm going to, you know, get up and exercise. So why are you even pretending? Why are you even what's your like stop gaming right you're it's not for real you're not for real about this well that's just some more bullshit because believing that the fact that i had fear mind thoughts means anything about who i am or what i do or the kind of person that i am what says anything about the kind of person that i am or who i am or what i do is what i do is what I choose to do, are the actions that I choose to take, the words that I choose to employ, the declarations that I choose to make about myself and my life. And that's what actually has something to say about who I am. The fact that I have some bullshit thoughts that go through my head still, it's been thousands of days now. I mean, I've been live streaming for hundreds of days straight and I still have thoughts like, I don't wanna do that. And again, I certainly don't buy that bullshit. But then I don't also buy the second tier bullshit that it means anything that those, those, that language ran through my mind, that thought thoughted me. I didn't have that thought. I didn't create that thought. That thought just showed the fuck up and I just let it go away as quick as it came because it is not from me. What is from me is my conscious choice, my actions, my declarations, my actual what I choose. I mean, I don't choose to have those thoughts. So make sure that you're not falling into trap door number one, because that fear mind would have you believe that it, it has way clearer vision than you do. It has way clearer access to truth. It, it has you feel like it is in on the game of any game that you ever come near that it knows that it's it's got the skepticism it's got the cynicism it's got the resignation it's got the whole package of like kind of you know what's the word like um a kind of like hipster detachment about like oh you know that's just that's just some bullshit you know it would have you be disconnected from everything if it had its way and it would also have you believe that it is um telling you the truth truth like the real truth like it sees what's really going on here which is just that everyone's trying to screw you over everyone's trying to get something from you blah 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 all the cynicism and skepticism that you could possibly enjoy and it's bullshit so don't fall into trap door number one but also don't fall into trap door number two because the fact that you're a human being just means that you're a human being the fact that you had a fear mind thought no even if you had 750,000 of them in a row doesn't mean anything about who you are. You actually get to say who you are. You are always getting to say who you are, whether you acknowledge it or not. But I'll tell you what, acknowledging it makes it a lot more fun, a lot easier to live the life that you desire to live. And 
it just feels way more powerful because then when you get thoughted by those thoughts that are like just disempowering and bullshitty and and just like you just kind of like they they come and they go and then if you don't make them mean anything they are gone as soon as they appear and you barely even register them if you register them at all and if you register them though you you don't get to make that mean something like oh i still can't just let those fear mind thoughts go now you're just falling into trap door number 3 like you can't keep you at some point you're creating these trap doors because you have some commitment to falling through the trap door and then it's just about saying no fuck you i'm not doing this anymore i'm not going to keep creating traps to fall into just because i'm a human just because i have a human mind Right. Yes, exactly. Well, Megan ran a 25 kilometer or some insane bullshit race today. You think she woke up and was like, yes, I can't wait to do this. No, but she did it because she knew how she would feel afterwards. She did it because that's why we do things. We do things because we actually decide. Not because we had a thought that thoughted us. No, you... I mean, I do believe, I'm very into this theory lately, that we really need some, we need to be like, you know, the, the, it's, it seems like an old wives tale. Who these wives were, I don't know, but, um, it's like a cultural, what's it called? Like an urban, it's like a, it's like a country legend. It's not an urban legend, but you know, that Eskimos have like 500 words for snow. They have like 49 or something. They have multiple words for snow that are definitely more nuanced than ours. So in the same vein, we really need as a privileged, enlightened, like post uh, philosophical kind of culture, we really need more words for thinking because they are not all the same thing. The way that the thoughts thought us versus the way that we create intentionally, the way that we think think consciously versus the way that we 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 have sort of mental images that come from the unconscious there's a whole insane variety of ways that our mind works never mind never mind when you get into the imagination level and then you add on dreaming and daydreaming and like there are so many different ways that your mind is operating for you to conflate them all into what it means to be a a, a, a conscious not only consciously thinking and creating but but to conflate anything with declaration that isn't a fucking declaration or action is bananas. So stop doing it because declarations and actions are the only fucking things that matter. And they are not not thoughts. They all start in thinking, but they start in very particular kinds of thinking. And so when you take all the other messy, shitty, bullshitty, fear-minded kinds of thinking and you just kind of make it all what is this like precursor to declaration and action, you're giving these thoughts that should they don't get to have any power. You're giving them the keys to the kingdom and they're bad people. <laughs> so stop doing that. They're the ones making all these trap doors and then framing you for it and making it look like you're setting them up because you really are because you are the whole person and it's complicated but that's how life is and so i do believe we could do a little better with our nuance in our language there was an interview with john tortura the other day on uh the news and he's so cool but he was like really lamenting the loss of nuance in our culture like that it is probably the biggest actual philosophical concern that we have right now is that we've just lost the ability to be in nuanced conversations about things and fuck that i have not i have not lost that ability no <laughs> and i will never and i will keep having the nuanced deep conversations about things for the rest of my life and i know that you all will too so obviously let's think more about thinking right Let's do it. I'm reading, a, I don't know what you call it, a treatise uh, by Heidegger on thinking. And he has one on being, he has one on thinking, he has one on metaphysics probably. Maybe that was just Kant. But, you know, look, all those guys are dead. I mean, some of their students are barely still alive. Some of them were my professors in college and graduate school. But like, 
the whole generation, the, we need the new thought leaders. I know that it's easy to look at social media and think, oh my God, thought leadership is so uh, saturated. There's so many people out there telling you what they think. I mean, really there are, but that doesn't mean that the market, that the, the real world for thought leadership is saturated. It is not. It's kind of dry as a bone. It's kind of, it's one or two here and there, and we've got seven and a half, eight billion people to get into the conversation. So cut the shit with how a thought leadership is a saturated market just because you've managed to slip right into the algorithm that fills your social media feeds with every single thought leader that you could ever come in contact with. And Jennifer has a fantastic point that this is also not even about quality versus quantity. There are a lot of non-quality thought leaders. There's lots of uh, air quotes involved that in, in, on social media. And, and there's also a lot that are actually like decently legitimate, but you've managed to find the one from each continent and your entire feed is just from them. And then you're like, well, everyone is already doing this. I can't help. I can't add to this conversation. I, I'm not blah, 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 blah. And really probably the tragedy is that the ones of us who are the most self-reflective, the most thoughtful, the most mm, generous and like deep and nuanced. We're the ones who managed to find the most number of nuancy excuses for why we shouldn't be the one doing the things. The simpletons, they're just out there. <laughs> they're just out there. They've already gone. They're already gone. They're already doing it. You're eight years behind them because you've been dwelling in a nuance for the last seven and a half fucking years. So you could just stop that. We could we could break this cycle of uh, self abuse that we're in, that, that we're doing because we're we are also then allowing unnuanced, n superficial thought leadership to dominate the world, and it's not working. So stop it. Nuance has a place, but nuance should never. Uh, it should, it, it has nothing to say about action. Like analysis paralysis is not being someone who's concerned about nuance. You can be concerned about nuance in three fucking sentences. Like you, it doesn't take a lot to be concerned with and aware of and present to the nuances that are life. It's just that maybe you can't get it into two words or a sound bite that is 0.1 seconds long. But the thing is with the, the it's like the perfect storm of shit when people, it's also the same way that like people who are kind hearted and generous and gentle and caring and empathetic, they end up being the ones who don't have access to wealth because they get in a story about how wealth makes people bad. And so then they don't want to be wealthy. And then only the bad people end up being wealthy. And then the story is true. And then it seems really real. And then literally the bad people are the ones with the money. And then bad things happen because money is power. But then, and then it seems true. Like, oh, money must corrupt. Well, no, it mustn't. It doesn't must anything. It's just money. It's just another energy. It's just power and power in the hands of the, of the, powerful, gentle, transformed, nuancy leaders is going to change the world. But not if you are so sure that, that the way that the world is showing up for you right now uh, reveals its fundamental nature instead of just revealing what is so right now, instead of just revealing what's happened. This is where we are. This is how it wound up. This is it. But that doesn't mean shit about tomorrow or the next day or the future or anything else. So go off in nuance, but also show the fuck up and show the fuck up. You're going to be nuancing your whole life. You're going to be in this conversation, the person that you are for your whole life. So you've got plenty of fucking time. The thing is you cannot wait until you've got it all handled to get out there. It will be too late then. You cannot wait until you have every fucking nuance handled because that's not how the world works. That's not how life works. You also, 
you do no one any good by being unwilling to put forth your transformational thoughts and ideas because there's some nuance that you don't have sorted or that could be used against you. If you're unwilling to have people judge you, if you're unwilling to have people disagree with you, if you're unwilling to have people prove you wrong in their worlds, you are not going to change anything in this world. It's a must. There's only a couple of musts that are real musts, but it is absolutely integral that you are willing to put forth what you believe without covering every fucking base, without making sure that it pleases every fucking person, without uh, tying up every loose end because the world is, the universe is in constant expansion. Loose ends, there have been five billion generated since I got on this live stream. If I waited until I had them all tied up, I would never speak. And that's what most of you are doing. So stop it. Just, just stop it. I can't decide. I think I can't decide if I like makeup Instagram better or Facebook no makeup. I think I like Facebook no makeup. So Instagram, if you're not digging my sparkly, the eyeshadow is so convincing. I know on Facebook you can't see it. But it's really amazing. I mean, the future is amazing, you guys. Let's go forward.